So on the board here, I've written three different statements. First, b to the power of 0 equals 1 for a base b not equal to 0. Second, in 2D Euclidean space, the distance between two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, is d equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And third, the natural log of x equals the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt. So here's a question. Which of these statements is a definition and which is a theorem? Pause for a minute and think about an answer for each one of these statements. Is it a definition or is it a theorem? The correct answer for each of these three statements is it depends. In order to understand why that's true, we're going to start with the statement in the middle. That in 2D Euclidean space, the distance between two points is the square root of the difference in x squared plus the difference in y squared. When you see this expression here, you might think that it's something that we can prove. And the reason you'd think that is if we have two points, x1, y1, and over here, x2, y2, we can construct a right triangle like this between those two points, where the length on the bottom here is x2 minus x1, and the length on the side is y2 minus y1. Then the length of this segment connecting them would be the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared by the Pythagorean theorem. That is something we can prove. Here's the issue. This proof does not prove that in 2D Euclidean space, the distance between two points is this length. We have proved that the length of the line segment connecting these two points is this square root value. But we didn't prove that the length of this line segment must be our definition of Euclidean distance. And it might seem obvious at first that when we're talking about the distance between two points, that has to be the length of the line segment connecting them. But that's not the only possible notion of distance. We could easily define distance as a definition to be the absolute value of x2 minus x1. In other words, we only consider the horizontal distance and we don't count vertical distance. There is no contradiction in defining our notion of distance in terms of this expression. It just makes our calculations a lot more difficult, so we use this definition instead. That's why when you look at textbooks on geometry, they'll often say that this is a definition rather than a theorem. Now the thing to realize is we can actually define Euclidean distance in such a way that this distance equation is a theorem instead of a definition. And that looks like this. We can define two-dimensional Euclidean distance as the length of the straight line segment connecting the two points. And that definition will give us as a theorem, through this Pythagorean theorem application, the distance equation in terms of the square root that we see here. So if this is our definition, then this statement becomes a theorem. But if this is our definition, then this statement becomes a theorem. It depends on which we choose first. The reason that a lot of textbooks end up using this definition instead is that if we start with this definition in blue, it's only really just to get us to this square root formula because it's not often useful in terms of calculations to think about distance this way. So mathematicians will often skip this middle step and say, well, if we're defining it either way, then there's no difference in rigor if we just say, this is our definition instead. There is one thing, though, that doesn't change. One thing that is always a theorem is that these two statements are equivalent. That if distance is defined as this square root function, then it is also the straight line segment connecting the two points. Or that if distance equals the length of the straight line segment, then it also equals this square root. The fact that those two give us the same result in any way that we use the idea of distance, 
That is a theorem no matter what our definition is. Now, if I were to guess which one of these being a definition is the most confusing, it might be this one right here, that the natural log of x equals the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt. Because most of the time when we learn about the natural log, it's defined to be the inverse of e to the x. So this integral, isn't that a theorem? Don't we prove that using the definition of the derivative and then the fundamental theorem of calculus? Well, not necessarily, because just like with Euclidean distance, we can actually show that this integral definition is equivalent to defining the natural log as the inverse of e to the x. And therefore, if this is our definition of the natural log, the fact that it's the inverse of e to the x becomes a theorem instead of a definition. Again, that only depends on your perspective. But one thing that doesn't change is that the natural log of x being this integral is equivalent to defining natural log of x such that the natural log of e to the x is x for all real x. So now that we've done these two examples, it's time to get back to our original question. b to the 0 equals 1 for non-zero b, is that a definition or a theorem? The exponential function, in the way we're thinking about it here, was originally defined where we would have b to some positive integer n being b times b times b and so on, where we would multiply n times. We could even extend this and say that for a positive integer n, b to the negative n is 1 over b to the n. So now we've defined our exponential not only for positive integers, but also for negative integers. All we're missing is 0. And from here, we can prove, using these definitions, that b to the m plus n equals b to the m times b to the n. But we can only prove this in certain cases. We can only prove this, given these two definitions, for m not equal to 0, n not equal to 0, and m plus n not equal to 0. The reason for that is as soon as we try to plug in 0 into any of these exponents, we never defined what that meant in our original function. So we can't apply these rules because there's no way to prove what happens at 0. In fact, I could define a completely new function called not exponential of x to equal some piecewise function, which is e to the x for all x not equal to 0, but equal to 5 at 0. This is a perfectly valid definition of a function. And for all x not equal to 0, we could prove not exponential of m plus n equals not exp of m times not exp of n. But we can't use that to prove the value at 0, because it could be anything. That value is a definition. However, there is a way that we can make b to the 0 equal 1 be a definition. See, the way that b to the 0 is often introduced is as a natural extension of the normal rules of exponents. If we know b to the m plus n equals b to the m times b to the n, for all the cases except when we have 0, it would also make sense for that rule to hold when the exponent is 0. So we could say, instead of b to the 0 equals 1, we could define b to the 0 is the number such that this statement is still true when we plug in b to the 0. It's a similar idea to what we did with Euclidean distance, where instead of defining the value directly, we define it in terms of why that would be the value we choose, because it's the length of this straight line segment, or for exponentials, because that keeps our rules consistent. But those two definitions are equivalent. And the fact that b to the 0 equals 1 is consistent with our rules, that will always be a theorem.